All right, good evening, everybody. We're going to bring the county government meeting to order. Uh, first up tonight is human resources. Hello, how's everyone? Hi, and thank you. Short and sweet. So we're going to make every attempt to get the apprenticeship program with Questar going up again. Mr. Church, the same representative that we met with last year, is very optimistic. They have a larger class this year. They have a lot more um, individuals that are actually enrolled in the programs that we have to offer. So we're really looking forward to, to trying to get some of the youth here this summer. Move it. Great. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Carrie. Wonderful. Thank you. Have a nice evening. If we can help promote that or something, let us know too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, uh, Jim and I have tried to get back together and see this. Thank you very much. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello, Adam. Okay. The first item is um, resolution requesting permission for our office to sign service agreements for distribution companies. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Both. Carrie. And second one is, um, once again, our office is looking to attend the Philadelphia Flower Show. This is a co-op booth opportunity for the show. We'll be attending one day, um, well, possibly two days. We haven't finalized it yet. Uh, so this is um, for travel expenses, and overnight we're looking at 3388 uh is matching funds eligible possibly i'm just waiting for permission from the state to authorize it okay any other questions second all in favor Aye. 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 that's it thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank next up is mis hello <laughs> Mine is to requesting to contract with Mercata and Absolute Connections to get um, most of our county buildings cameras. Um, and it will be, I believe, using mostly ARPA cameras. So I have a couple of questions. Sure. Is this an extension of the cam or extension or replacement of cameras that we have, or is, are these additional cameras? So yes, it'll be replacements. Um, Highway Department and 325 Columbia Street are in disarray. I mean, it's you can barely see anything on those cameras. Um, it would we have had cameras there, but they're yes. not functional. Um, I've gone down with the sheriff's office a few times to kind of get footage from crimes, and I you can't see anything. There's these cameras are not even functional. Um, and then the courthouse, um, they're starting to fade away. So I figured if we could add all that on one platform, uh, it would be good for at least the ease for any law enforcement, et cetera, would be able to access this if there is an issue. And the, um, is this a continuation of an existing contract or is this, did we bid this? And this will be- Sorry. State contract. State contract. State contract. State contract. State contract. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, labor and the the company absolute connections is on state bank state contract. And then the other question is has to do with and I see Michael sent out something this afternoon about I was concerned about policy of privacy. We're working on a policy. Um, yeah. So obviously, before we start any work, we would definitely finalize something so that way everybody's happy with. You know, we have. Well, there's some laws that govern that there's basic yeah. stuff anyway. Right. If you were to. This company is not going to do something that's illegal anyway. So, no, no, but it is good to have some policy. I will say that we went to the ARPA committee with a request last uh, last week, was it? Yeah. <clears throat> and we had asked Chris to circle back because uh, and look at solid waste. And there was another one, I can't remember what it was, but it added to the cost that we had originally approved. Uh, so, we can approve it here and then go back to ARPA and just talk about that additional cost uh, just so everybody's on the same page <clears throat> and that the 11 warren street obviously we didn't have access and we don't know what the configuration is yet right. so once we know that we'll know where it's fine to make, right? yeah of course do you know do you know how much is coming from the courthouse equipment act i don't know we get a uh, third of it 25 percent of it gets reimbursed to the CIA. and there's a possibility and we're not sure whether we'll do it or not of dss reimbursement as well for that building over 350 is a high mile, right? Yeah. I'll move it. So what was, the, what was the original ARPA request? 240 something. Yeah, yeah. 240. 240 yeah. So it's now three. 
Yeah. So that would be the high end. Uh, we it's just because we don't know with the labor if there's going to be any. Because I mean, I haven't been in all the ceilings and all the, these buildings, and they're a little older, some of them So I want to make sure we have something to make sure the labor is covered. So these are all interior or exterior. They're both. both. So public areas as well as outside. So I had a couple of other questions. Is this, and who does the monitoring and the maintenance on these? So the monitoring is is uh, in the cloud, and then we would give access to probably law enforcement and the security services division. Um, so they would have access to the cameras, probably in the booths where they're stated, where they're sitting. Um, it would be accessed only, you know, I, I guess it would be through the board of supervisors um, to get permission to gain access if needed. But obviously with emergency, as you stated in the TEP policy, um, if law enforcement needed it, then they would, they would grant them access to it. I mean, we, it, would, it would be limited access. Yeah, okay. That's and from what I, when I spoke to these these individuals, similar to what we have now, right? I right. Mean, it's just, so what I did was they they gave us we can give people temporary access. So meaning like, okay, you have two weeks to review footage, and that's it. And then they your can they copy? So we can give them read only rights, or they can download the video footage. You know. And all this could be in your policy. And, it's, and, of course. and my last question is the timeline. If we were to do it tomorrow, when would this take place? Oh, I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. Um, we have a lot, there's a lot of moving parts, but also, also it's uh, what the company, what their time frame looks like. So if we get, I would definitely be able to get a, a better time frame once everything's finalized. Um, it's, it is a pretty big project. Is it a ball? Do you have a ballpark? Six months? I mean, I could say we could probably start if, if all is if all is going well. I mean, we could probably start in six months. Yeah, start in six months, and it could probably be a phased installation. Oh, right? absolutely, would be. Yeah. And this has it. nothing to do with the prison, correct? Prison cameras are a separate entity. That's, that's totally separate. separate. Yeah, no okay. I have another question. Hmm? So there's license plates and all that involved. Is that's, that new? It's only if we tell it to track those license plates so if there's an individual that you know, drives into the parking lot and they hit something or yeah. they, they're causing havoc we can review the footage and say okay this license plate this this facial feature if they come back let us know alert us um and we and we can try and so what it would do then is it would you know, it would review the footage in the past and sh and track where they were on county property Mm -hmm. But it's not something that just constantly downloads everybody's face and everybody's license plate that goes through. It's only on a basis of you ask it when we ask it to do it, and that's it. And and again, that's only only certain officials can do that, and we're not going to let everybody just you know, nilly do it. And because you're, I mean, you're in a neighborhood also, so there's yep. you're mm -hmm. capturing things that maybe of course, and the only not... time, so only time it would it would capture is. When we tell it to do so, and it's going to be that specific individual and/or license plate. And, I mean, just so you know, currently, like with this building, cameras, people's next door neighbors, their windows are blocked out by the camera. So, you know, they, you know, it's a privacy issue. We're not right. That's that was the question. Yeah. We don't know when they're taking a shower. No, we don't need to know that. <laughs> Although, if you sit in the county attorney's office, you can tell. <laughs> Given well, that window. <laughs> I, I would feel a lot more comfortable approving this if if I can make those privacy guarantees to my constituents. It's just that, right? Like I used to live across the street from a county building. I mean, a lot of county residents, a lot of Hudson residents live adjacent to and walk by these buildings. And so that's the reason why I sort of put forward that memo is that if if we have a commitment to sort of in some ways do what you're describing, but that's not your you're just what you're traveling is not binding. So like that's why I want a policy is to say I can then go to my my constituents and say, yeah, we're putting on these cameras. It's about security, and it's still about your privacy because mm -hmm. it is it's creepy that we have the capacity to say we're going to follow follow you around and we're going to know whenever you walk by a lot of different buildings in the county or drive by, mm -hmm. and that's and we don't know where the counter where like a resident wouldn't necessarily even know where they're pointed. So. It's important to me to be able to say that I have this guarantee. If it's not in a policy yet, I know it's, we've agreed that it's going to be in a policy. So that's the reason why I put that draft forward is to be able to start that conversation and that we could we could approve sending that to the attorney to write up or something like that. So I would like to sort of do those concurrently. Does the city of Hudson have cameras? 
it does, but they don't have I think like adding license plate and facial recognition is like because I know like relation village of relation does yeah. right um and I, they've I believe they record everything so. right yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was going to say like that I'm I, mean, I, you I agree with you Michael that we should have no. policies for what we're no. utilizing I, I don't disagree with that but you know the reality is today everybody's got a camera out here and they're recording everything every one of us does whether it's a business or a residence today but they're not People. doing it on a regular basis you know they're, they're not up there 24 we don't know that you know but people have the ability today yeah. and then everybody's got one of these ring that they can be yeah. recording you yeah. at any given every time. household has a ring right yeah. well, and i don't want to speak for chris but one thing i would recommend is that these cameras not go live until we have a policy that everybody agrees on okay. i mean we can order them but it just means we don't yeah. it's just going to be a process to get them anyway so i think we yeah. can develop this policy mm -hmm. Michael started. So, you know, probably policy I out guess, there, right? And then open up a can of worms. You're going to ask more questions. So, yeah. so I understand this. The cameras will come on and take pictures constantly, or it, they it will record motion, motion, just okay. like any other camera. And again, with the exception of any privacy masks that we put on. That so, way. how do you block out license plates or facial? So or so? It it will record them, but we are not tracking those. So okay. The recognition would set a database of license plates that would come through if we want to turn it on fully or we can utilize it in past footage and or future for an incident that may have occurred. Let's say somebody got kicked out of 325, they're not allowed to come back. It would help security services to get an alert that, hey, this individual is on the premises before they come into the building. That's only if you told it to do it. Exactly, right. exactly. You yeah, well, I'm saying is you take a license plate number, you take a license plate number, it's on the camera, it's in the court. It's in there, but it, it's it, not. But whether you look at it or not, there's a different scenario. But if, you, if it is recorded, because if somebody does something, why would you I don't know, go back and see if they come back again? Why wouldn't you go after them? If the guy goes in there and destroys something with the car, you want to be able to see the license number as he's doing it, not say, right. well, he comes back and which, does it again. Which is why when you set that alert, it goes back to the past footage and reviews all the footage. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Is, how this all works? Sorry, trying to yes, explain. So no, I'm just trying to figure this out. Because <laughs> I know the throughway and all them, they're putting all the cameras up to give us all speeding tickets now. Absolutely. And, go over, so, so, and that's automatic. So, so if we approve this today, it's with the caveat that we will have a policy that will be active before the cameras are active. Yeah, I will not. Yeah. We won't put anything in motion until that policy is. Okay. I guess that what I would, I guess I would like to dive a little deeper and say not only would have a policy, I guess we we'd have a policy that some way includes like were there any objections to the recommendations that I made? Like does that seem like a good starting point for that policy? I felt it was fine. Okay. So I reviewed it. It was fine. It was a good start, actually. Yeah. I also think it's a good idea. Like, we're a small city, and if I'm, my kids skateboarding in front of a particular building over and over. I think it might be helpful if there was a sign that says there's cameras here. Well, and the security cameras are here, and then people have an option to not be hanging around. Well, anywhere where I believe we have cameras, like this building, you have to have notification yeah. that okay. there are cameras. Speaking of that, where is that? It's on the front of the building? Yeah, the it, on the front, the, right? Here, I believe, yes. Mm -hmm. So would we probably, being a good neighbor, would also want to notify the mayor that we're installing a new camera system on the building, so at least they know that they're in place. As a courtesy, let him know that these cameras are being but, installed. You know, quick story here. Uh, a few years ago that there were a couple of shootings in Hudson, which were nearby. And the first place the police came was here to look at our cameras. And hence, that's why we have new cameras in this building, because the cameras that they came to look at didn't work. Didn't work. And uh, so we had the... And those are some cameras that they don't work. And of course, I'm of the yeah. old generation, and I'm watching the people come through the park, and I'm writing down what they're wearing. Meanwhile, Ryan was in the other room recording it on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's how old I am. You know, like didn't even think to grab my phone and... And record but well i had nine weeks of grand jury not too long ago i'm trying to look at that grainy camera finish and trying to understand any part of it mm -hmm. is really hard yeah okay any other questions so i'll make no, a motion thanks. that we move forward uh with the caveat that it has to be referred back to arpa for the additional funding okay i need a second all in favor aye opposed carry. Thank you.
Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And Micah, thank you for the starting piece. Jim, the controller is up next. Yep. No, that's what I got. Kelly's got something else up there. So we have three transportation resolutions. Uh, the first is uh, we have Utopia Foundation give us uh, some funding for the uh, shopping shuttle expansion. Uh, we reduced their share. Uh, we put an extra 50,000 in this year's budget for our share of that. So this is extending it for one more year where they're helping us out pay for that extension. How's that going? Wasn't there talk about Hudson helping us with that too? Did we speak to Hudson on that or Dean or that? Or? I think we talked about doing it for next year because we come up. I know, but we, we didn't want to try to get it in their budget, but have we spoke to them about next year? I have, yeah. Okay. Any chance of that happening? I just asked you, yeah. I, I know we talked about yeah. it. How's that going? Is there any data that's... Uh... There is. Um, it the ridership is, is up for sure so the if you think about the extended hours as a separate route than the regular hours it has sort of significantly less riders than the regular hours but it has significantly more riders than the other routes that are not the shopping shuttle um so i think i think we're getting i think like last week i looked at it, it was like six it was like if we frequently get about 60 people per day for like the five hour like five hour block is sort of how it's going. We're not seeing a reduction in the daytime shuttle, which we thought it would just be digital switching, but we're not really seeing that. It seems to be new drivers. Yeah, so the daytime shuttle is actually up compared to what it was previously. So I'm not sure if it's a coincidence, but the riders who get on the regular hours and then and then take it to the switch to the extended hours get counted in the daytime hours. There's a fair amount of riders that are sort of Riding both, you know, the traditional hours and the new hours that are getting counted as the old riders that might be part of the bump. So the the ridership, I think, is up maybe twenty five percent, and then we well we added like forty percent hours to sort of the, the ratio. So this is the resolution to accept the new funding source, right? Like to approve the contract with Utopia. I move it. May I move it? I'd like to move it. <laughs> Second. So I still got a question. So does do you know this, Mike? Does Hudson supply any services for busing the residents of Hudson out for shopping? No. no. Just the county does. Where they yeah, we, 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 part of we absorbed that many years ago. Okay. I was just asking to see if they thought about it or they ever did it at one point. They never did. No. As far as I know. Okay. They used to. Okay. Well, I got a first second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Both. Carry. <laughs> Second one. Uh, so this is to renew the contracts with both uh, Johnston. Oh no, which is Johnston uh, for another year. This is the I think the last year we can renew it based on the existing contract. Move it. Second. A little favor. Aye. Oh, carry. And the last one is the by a new bus. We received authorization from, oh no, I'm sorry. This is a contract with Copark. Right, sorry. So this is just the, another the annual uh, extension with Copark. They did increase their price. Johnston did not for next year, but they did from 1197 to 1275. I'll move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. I think I should have all messed up with my. What's that? Marissa, we all messed up on oh. my agenda. She didn't include that one on the agenda. Yeah, so it was like. Not, and it's not in my package. Yeah. <laughs> and then this one's the last. We received DOT up, approval to purchase a new bus. Our fleet is rapidly aging. And unfortunately, we bought a couple buses all at once a couple of years ago. So we have a couple that are going to need to be replaced all at one time. So the price is 223000 almost 224000 for a new bus. Uh, prices increased significantly over the last couple of years. Um, but there will be majority of this. I can't tell you exactly how much, but the vast majority of this will be funded through state and federal funding. 
Jim, have they gone to electric buses yet? I mean, I know they have electric buses. I didn't know if they've done something for like that around here or not. It's not part of the bid package okay. that DMT offers yet, but um, it, I don't even know if they offer it. They're experimenting with the schools. Right now. Yeah. Schools is a big thing. Okay. The school buses are three, four hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're really expensive. So yeah, well, they can. The price will be the whole run yet. Yeah. So what is it? Uh, two buses for the winter. 20 passengers 24 20, 24, 24 it says i'll move it second all in favor aye aye, aye. carry thank you great it's a transportation day now we've got a lot of stuff happening i think we have all the degree on the tool but i think we have the uh, annual report that's what i have from yep, tom. this is tom okay and tom. Tom. Hi. Tom. I second. Hi. Uh, just want to stop by and say hello. Uh, I submitted the annual report uh, for the county historian position. I've been in for six weeks, uh, filling in on an interim basis. Uh, I've been the town of Germantown historian for the last five years. And uh, you'll see in the report, basically, it's a look ahead towards uh, 2024. Uh, the Columbia NY 250 committee is going to meet here tomorrow. And we'll probably have some resolution requests generated from that for the next county government meeting. Uh, other than that, I don't have anything else for today. If you have any questions, we have to take any question. Sure. So, Tom, my question is I'm Hudson Third Ward, and I was excited to see your note about the Sail 250 and yeah. the vessels. Yeah. Uh, so, I was wondering if, if you are connected with the Hudson Sloop Club, which they uh, manage like the Hudson City Dock. And it's yeah. also been part of their mission to to bring sort of like classic vessels to Hudson. So be yeah, if there's a way for me to introduce them to the right people who are working on that, I'd love to do that. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I have a lot of friends who are in that club. I don't own a real boat okay. except canoes and kayaks. So, I don't, yeah. Yeah. so you're like, you can <laughs> uh, but I do have contacts with that club. That's cool. that's the ideal place to have it, I think, if we do. Yeah. Uh, there are some open questions with some of the boats, some of the larger historic ships can't get under Kingston Rankliff or mm -hmm. like, more likely the Rick Van Winkle Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a concern. I've been in a couple of meetings uh, with that organization earlier this year. And uh, yeah, if you want to send me a, a contact, uh, I'm not sure who runs the are we talking about like the tall ships? Yeah, we're talking about historic vessels like the uh, the half moon potentially. Um, so the sail can't get underneath some of these bridges. Yeah, some of the really big historic ships can't get underneath some of the Hudson River bridges. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's questionable whether some of these ships are going to be able to get all the way up to Albany or not. So it's possible Catskill and Hudson may be the northernmost. Mm -hmm. Stops for these trips before they turn around and go back out to sea. Uh, Sail 250 is part of uh, it's multiple cities, be Philadelphia, New York, Boston, and uh, possibly some other cities. I think Savannah, South Carolina, and some other places. Oh, so, cool. Tom, excuse me, keep your white yell for me. Tom, okay. call. Uh, we have an historical bridge in our town, the, yeah. the number one bridge, the Shaw Bridge. But we've been working on that for years to try to do something with it. Mm -hmm. The problem that has happened is the landowners own the roads on either side. We don't have any place to have parking or anything for that to try to restore the bridge so somebody go look at it. Yeah. I'm trying to think, is there a way we could take it someplace else and set it up so people can actually see what it was about? <coughs> I mean, I've looked at possibly moving it, but I didn't know if there would be a colleges or anything would be interested to take this and put it someplace say this okay. is the number one bridge that was built and blah 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 and this is the only one left going so we can restore it that way instead of just leaving it where it is and it's just deteriorating all the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i That's can true. look into it yeah if you could yes. like i said we've been working Do you on view this that as the only option like is there no possible way to make it? we've been the, the trouble is we've got committees working on trying to do something is but the trouble is you have the landowners on the land on either side and they don't want people walking on their property and the yeah. stuff like that so now we've got a bridge okay. that we sits out of nowhere so yeah. we can do anything with you know okay. We own the land. I don't want them on my property, which I understand. It's your property up to the bridge because it's an old user road. So they the, the boundary line is right in the center that's of the old road. Right, right. right. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, just think about yeah, it. Kind of far, but I can trail. They need a little bridge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You talked to Ray about it. I haven't talked to Ray yet on it and stuff like that. I have talked to other committees to see if there is a college up in Albany or engineering committee. We thought oh, oh, maybe they'd be interested, but okay. they never got back to us on stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. just it's. Okay. 
It's just I hate to see it to go. But it's been sitting there for twenty some years now, roughly. But haven't they deed the land to, your, to the town? The, yeah, the, well, the county did. The county had it. They gave it the, back to the town. To the right of way, to the user. The, road. It's a user road. So okay. the user road. So when they deeded it back to us, the user road went back to the landowners right. on either side of the bridge. So they on either side of the bridge, and so theoretically, you don't have any room for anybody to go there. I mean, that's a problem. We can't say, okay, park a car in somebody's yard. I'll talk to you afterwards. Mm -hmm. We just did this with a monument in Canaan, and we did a lot line adjustment with the, the property owners. Well, just to get get that the, little bit of but if the property owners don't you, agree, I mean, we still again, you have to have access to get on the bridge. If it's you it's don't it's have access, six years to be warm down. Oh, <laughs> this is been fifteen years now. Oh yeah, don't worry about it. But anyway, if you can, if you look right about it. It's such a beautiful thing. Anybody have any more questions for Tom? Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, planning. That's said for the planning. Well, I know who's coming up after that. Your property. So, she's going up one time. Okay. Um, the first resolution is to appoint a member to the County Planning Board for Region 3, which is Gantley Paulus, Thomas Moore Jr. I love it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the second is authorization to appoint members to the uh, Climate Smart Communities Task Force. I'll move it. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is Aye. that for both of them? Yeah, two of them, right? The second, the next one is to the chairperson. Yeah, the chairperson. Yeah, the chairperson. Of the, uh, yeah, so this one is for the chairperson of the task force, uh, David Newman, who is currently serving as the task force chairperson. Move it. Second, Howard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then the next two uh, deal with the annual process to add <clears throat> parcels to the uh, county agricultural districts. Um, one, one of the resolutions is for the, the seeker review and the other is the actual addition. Um, the seeker, uh, I do want to be going through with Rob, but the county attorney at, full board, the, yeah. at full board. Um, but the um, applications this year, the the Farmland Protection Board is recommending four parcels <clears throat> for inclusion, 176.76 acres in the towns of Ancrum, Canaan, and Chatham. And it's to existing Act Districts 1, number 1, number 9, and 10. Um, it would add uh, to Act District 1, 54.82 acres to 9, 83.58 acres, and uh, Act District 10, 38.36. So, um, Barring any um, questions from Ankrum or Chatham, I would move it. If there were any questions. I'll say that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Go, Jared. That's it. Um, That's it. Well, thank you. Well, thank you very much. I'm quick. I know. I know. I know. I know. It'll take Rob longer to read through the seeker at the full board. But, uh, so as long as real property sees how quick we're moving today, <laughs> I'm only kidding. We got lots of time. You got a half hour to play. Uh, uh, well, we got a big question. And we got, I know, so we only got two left. We got a half hour. This should be quick. Okay. I'm just requesting to fill the deputy director position within our department. Move it. Um, Second. Yeah. All favor. Okay. Oh. That's it? Yeah. Are you kidding me? There's nothing Unless there. Unless anybody has any real property questions. So I have a real property question. <laughs> Kippy <laughs> wanted to <laughs> talk for a while. Um, is there any updates on how we're handling the uh, new fire exemptions? Mm -hmm. I know that uh, some of the assessors are wrestling with that. Yeah. The interpretations of the code. Um, yeah. Yes. So um, one of the one of the and you learn these things as you go along um and you know obviously this is brand new exemption and we haven't right. had this specific exemption before so there's things that we're learning but um one of the things coming up is fire protection districts mm -hmm. if you have fire protection districts in your town you 
Yeah, mm -hmm. no, you do, but you can. I, I don't do, know. But Gannett does. Okay. Oh, well, we do. So because appara apparently, the town board is the governing body for that mm -hmm. fire protection district. So I will be sending out an email to the supervisors, encouraging them to talk to their assessors. But it's a there's a possibility that you may have to adopt an additional either local law or resolution specific to that um, fire protection district if you're going to grant an exemption from fire taxes that's one of the issues because right now the local law that you adopted in my opinion is applies towards town taxes if you want it to apply towards a specific fire protection district that it it would appear to me but you'd want to consult with your town attorney that you may need to do another local law or resolution i'm not sure for a fire tax for uh, clarification fire protection district we have in stockport we have fire commissioners yeah it's a fire protection district then, right? No, no. You, you would usually contract out for a fire protection district, so you have a district that's not covered by the commissioners, okay. and then you contract And on for your it. on your assessment roll, they're coded with an FP, okay. um, so the assessor will see it that way. But the ones that are actual fire districts, they adopt their own resolutions. But the fire protection districts, I was at the school, Chatham School Board meeting, and a couple of firemen came up to me afterwards and said, you know, that, well, they're part of a fire protection district, and so the town is their governing, right. which got mm -hmm. me okay. asking. We used to have three in Stuyvesant, and then we dissolved them and made it all one district. But yeah. yeah, we used to, so the town used to approve the so you, contract. You know, right. But, so I believe right now you just have two fire districts. Right. But yes, yeah. Ghent has one. So if it's going to apply to the Ghent Fire Protection District tax line item on the tax bill, I believe another local law or resolution yeah, will have yeah. to be adopted by the town as the governing body. So what is this taking place? I'll be emailing probably tomorrow. So I'm, I'll talk to you all Just to let you know. But I'm still confused by this because we have a Canaan Protective Fire Association, which is a 501c3. We have a Canaan Protective Fire District. And the they fire, do their own taxing. They, the, we don't, the fire district, right. if they adopt their own budget, they right. do. They have the authority they're to do district, that. Yeah. They're, they're go, that's their governing body, then, the fire district. Right. But okay. if, if, if the town is the governing body you for know. the other, then it's the town that would have to. From what I'm finding out, I had, I had um, sent an email to Rob Fitzsimmons, and he gave me an opinion and, and said, also, had I gotten anything from the state, unfortunately, where's the camera, but New York State, mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't get the, I did get an answer, but um, they don't give the opinions that they used to give to support the ago answer. to support the answer. But, but um, it did support me thinking that it's going to be the town that's got to. All right, so I'm going to throw a little boomerang into you. So now we have a. Philmont is a, we have a fire protection district here yeah, in Philmont, but Philmont is governed by the, the village, village board, right. not by the firemen. Right. So how does that play out? With it? And it's not governed by the town at no, all. it's not governed by the town. So I believe it's the village the board, board that would have, have to, to the, adopt that. Right. Yeah. And the other question. Whatever about, board is their governing body. Right. Only to pertain to the fire tax line on the tax bill. Okay. So my other question is, it comes along with this. I also heard that you, you have to reside in the Columbia County for this so, break. Well, no, so for, for this, for this, for the exemption, this is another thing that, that, um, questions that, that have been coming up and, um, not just my opinion, but the opinion of other directors, um, would be that if, if it's a mutual aid scenario, it's not, they, let's say Chatham does mutual aid for Austerlitz, but the um, someone lives in the Chatham Fire Department. No, someone is in the Chatham Fire Department, a volunteer there, but lives in the town of Austerlitz. 
as far as the taxes, what's on the tax roll, and I, I did, this was a, a real scenario, I did check with the town clerk, Chatham does not cover the town of Austerlitz. So that volunteer who's in the Chatham Fire District would not get the exemption on his property in Austerlitz. And, and that's the way the law is written now. I would anticipate that because the New York State Fire Association is on top of this as well, I would anticipate that there'll be changes to the law coming down the pike. Um, but as, a, as it is right now, you have to be a volunteer in a fire district that serves the town that your primary was. I remember so you saying, saying that when you first yeah, did that, when we first did it. Does that change yeah. though, so Suzette? That's, what is, in reading, Errol's, uh, Lynn called you the other day. For a 20 year conference. member? Yeah. yeah. So my, my opinion <laughs> with the 20 year member, when you look at the actual real property tax law section 466A, when it speaks about 20 year member, yeah. it's it says that they, they have to have to have been active for right. 20 years and that they have to live within the county so if they were a 20-year fireman in stuyvesant but then they moved to kinderhook they could get it that's my understanding of the law that's what but, i'm telling some people yes <laughs> and, and for, for 20 years that that yeah. that is my understanding of the law but you can contact i'll sound like the state in saying that you can contact your municipal attorney okay to get their opinion but that is that's my you know because to complicate opinion. that and, and you know we've got a lot of firemen that live in Stuyvesant but belong to the Scotia Landing Fire Company which is in Correct. Rensselaer County right. so Correct. one of them you that know, don't have 20 years of service well uh, one of our board members though is you know has 20 years of service yeah. and during that 20 years of service we used to have a fire protection district that he did cover the area he lived into so now does he get the exemption or not I, you know right we threw it at lynn and she went mm. right. <laughs> you know? yeah there's a lot there's a, a, a number of those scenarios that no, are coming up the scenarios so, that only live in the live in the county and the, the so they don't get caught the, the it should other be thing, all firemen shouldn't it just be the, all firemen that work yeah, the city, this, the, the well fire. and you have you have to look at it as this is a property tax exemption. So the other property owners within that fire district or within that town are making up the difference for that person to have the exemption. So if it's if it's a fire company that doesn't service that town, you know, should those property owners that in that town right. be yeah. be making up the difference for that so exemption? I just want to go back to your fire district. I didn't realize that you that this exemption applied to fire district taxes. It, it can. Okay. It can. In the, if the fire company votes. Yes. For it, right? Okay. Yes. No, but so, yeah. I don't know that the fire company knows that. So I, I need to go back to the fire company. They should know that because yeah. I believe the fire coordinator's office has. They they actually recently sent out an email um, because I contacted George and said I only have a couple of resolutions from fire districts and if, I know he started early you know, on that, and, that was, yes so, and um, if if um they're going to be applied to the role the assessor needs a copy and i would like a copy too for our well, when do you need it by? now the deadline it, sh it should be by march 1st okay yeah it should be my by the reason i have how many questions out which ones have done it like which fire districts have i have, i would recommend that you ask your well I only have, I think I have three or four now, and you send that out. What and none that? for your, none okay. for your town. But I, I did. I sent it out to all the assessors, and told them the ones that I have, and you know if they get any more to to pass them my way. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, and it's that again as for all of the municipal, all of the towns in Columbia County adopted. The exemption as well as the county the bigger school districts such as chatham ichabod crane taconic hills um new lebanon is the only one that does it has it i think and hudson school adopted it germantown school did not new yeah. lebanon school did not um the city of hudson i don't believe has adopted the exemption yet i have not heard anything um 
if, if you guys could reach out maybe mm -hmm. to the common council or something to see, but I haven't heard anything back. Um, and I haven't gotten received anything, you know, from the assessor either. So the city of Hudson's the only municipality right now that I don't have. So we have three really small fire companies, but they have all of their members of each of those companies have gone to both the New Lebanon and the Canaan town boards, mm -hmm. asking them to write a letter to the New Le Lebanon School District. The, super, the superintendent or president of the board will not even allow it to be put on the agenda. Yeah, it's... it's really? Yeah. And um, not even for the veterans. They don't offer the, the veterans exemption yeah, either. Yeah, the Gary went there. Readers. Yeah, numerous times. So we're going to try and at least um, get it on the agenda for a public vote. Because... Yeah, well, when you do that, could you try to get the veterans back? <laughs> yeah, we are. We're, we're, doing, we're doing veterans. We're doing all of them. Oh, because... Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, the Germantown school did adopt the veterans, but they they have not adopted the fire exemption yet. So I'm going to come back to you for the so that I can give them the financial explanation of why it makes sense to do it for them in terms of the cost to the taxpayer. Yeah, yeah. What else? I mean, email that. I mean, we respect their autonomy to make the decision, but I think it for the public. They need to just answer to the public. The public right. wants to know why they won't vote it up or down. Right. And there, you know, I mean, we did we did start this process well, early yes. and, and yep. did our studying and everything, but there's questions that are coming up now that people, and the firefighters have to apply for the exemption. There is an exemption application that they have to submit to the assessor by March 1st. And the fire chiefs, I believe most of the assessors are um, you know, getting lists or some kind of certification notice from the fire chief to say that, yes, they are active members and they have served for at least two years. But you don't have to complete the certification process. You just have to do the application by March 1st. Or do you Correct, but the assessor needs the uh, certification yeah, in order to determine the eligibility. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Back again to me. Yeah. So you know we just took over the West Camp Fire District. Correct. And now we're in the process of taking over the Churchtown Fire District. Okay. You didn't know that either. Well, that's coming on board. Okay. That's within. The, that's why I'm asking how when long. When will that be? Well, I hope within the next six months. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're that into it right now but there, there's issues we have to do because they used to hunt the firemen and once we have to make changes mm -hmm. in that area we might go after the film too we're not sure about that yet we're working on that and so we're trying to take the fire districts and make them all fire districts no fire protection district right which would work best for the town yeah so but that's why i'm asking so how much time do we have because if they have to do something this wouldn't go on until well, but next then year if the year it's after. going into Claude fire district they have adopted a correct have adopted but a until local. that's done it, it, they can't do anything at this moment because there won't be no more fire protection districts what i'm saying correct. but until they're inv in, involved into the into the fire district which correct. may be in order for it to in order for that church town you said in order for that to be changed over um it would have to be to the assessor by Mid October or so, in okay. order to be on to the for next year's role. Okay, that's what I was asking. As far as getting those parcels flagged into the, but talk to Lynn about that. Okay. Getting them flagged All into, right. and that's why Clawbrick didn't make it for this year for twenty twenty four because it was it right. Was, but that's what we're trying to do away with for next year. And we're yeah. seeing this is coming down the road too. Another one. I yeah. Know, boy, but as far as down, so. the twenty twenty five taxes. The exemption would really, you know, need to be in place by right. March one okay. of this year. But if there, yeah, that won't be. So yeah, yeah. that'll be changed for next year. That's fine. I'm just trying but, to get ballpark again, where we're going. That's just the fire tax, right? Line. I, know, I know. So okay. there, I, I would, I would imagine that there's going to be a number of volunteers that are going to apply for the exemption this time around rather than the three thousand dollar exemption mm -hmm. we had before because it will be more than the income tax credit and that's another thing you know they can't get both the income tax right. credit and the, although for the moment that may get changed right, as yeah. well <laughs> yeah okay. but yeah, with schools signing <laughs> on it, it will be it will be a good good exemption <laughs> for that ten okay. percent any other uh, questions no, that helps. I knew you'd stay around for a while. You were getting out of here quickly. I just pity the poor assessors that are having to go through this. Yes, yes, they're, yes, they're, they're, and they're, 
you know, they're doing the best they they can, but there there are those scenarios that are popping up that, you know, we, especially these small districts as well. I mean, it's not. Yeah, some no, that's different, different, if different I in every municipality. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, the yeah. thing too, like with the fire protection districts, they're always on the roll, but I never really knew myself who governed it. Wasn't something that I needed to know at the time right. who governed them and how. Well, so, by law, it's a lot of work for the towns. Is we have a fire protector, you're supposed you're it's basically like hiring a contractor to do right. a job. Yeah. Right. So you're supposed to have I gotta know every member. Who's an interior firefighter? Who's a truck driver? Who's this? And I mean, I'm supposed to know all that stuff. Wow. So if the state comes down, of they're going to audit us to see right. if we have all this information available, you know. And trust me, you don't get you can't get it. You, <laughs> you, don't, you don't get the information. So, well, they audit right. us. And so that's why we're going to the fire di just do districts and be done with what's out of our area. Yep. We got ten minutes left, so yeah. Well, yeah. I know. I know. Oh, I told you got to go. I have to. It's his fault. Um, no, wait. I did it. I, I told her to call it short. She didn't want to. Sergeant Major, you're up. Save the best for last. Okay. Oh, really? Suck up to one. Yeah. <laughs> you may be. Are you doing Garrett? Good. Yeah. You? Good. Yeah. We have been really busy again. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thanks to my new deputy. Yes. I was able to take Christmas off this year. Really? Uh, last week, Christmas, oh, I was in Rachel. office on Christmas Day. No, oh, okay. <laughs> the crisis. It, on our update activities, uh, in December, I chaired the Congressional Veterans Advisory for the Congressman. And the next day, I, we selected uh, the Kids for Military Academies. I've been on the committee for 30 years, and this is the worst year we've ever had. We only had, normally we have 25, 30 kids. This year we had nine for four academies. Mm -hmm. And it was, but I mean, it, nothing taken away from the kids. They were fantastic. Right. And we sent, you know, really quality. Well, they set it down for all the military. Yeah, it is. Well, it is. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of the high schools didn't submit anybody. So, but it was successful. And we filled all the vacancies we had. The new comp and pen exams, uh, submissions. Well, between Rachel and I, we're probably averaging five a week. And new cases coming in. I have to tell you, they're not all from Columbia County. The VA has decided if they have somebody comes into the VA and they're not getting proper care by another county VSO, they shouldn't to us. Mm. And we don't turn anybody away, do we? So we build those other counties back then? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to take their money. This yeah, right. Right. Yeah, there's a flow of money. Because the average of 100% veteran right now is $3,500 a month. And since I reported last time, we've had 14 new Centers in Columbia. Right, 14 new in the last couple of months? Yes. Wow. And we're winning, between she and I, we're winning almost every appeal we submit. And we, we've drawn some really great uh, veteran raiders that are listening to us, don't cut us off in five minutes, and let us dig into the file and present our case just like we were an attorney for the veteran, which we, in reality we are, and we're yeah. winning. Great. Mm -hmm. Visitors, uh, last week I had lunch and a tour at, at our facility with the Lieutenant Governor's Chief of Staff. Um, came mainly to see me because um, Lieutenant Governor wants me to mentor his two boys this summer. <laughs> into, oh, he bought you lunch. Yeah. <laughs> and we're, you know, I talked to the widows and they're happy to have them spend a few hours a week down in our um, food pantry. So we're going to do that. Uh, last Monday, this past this Monday, we um, entertained a commander from the New York State American Legion. It was all day long. He showed up. We gave I gave my brief and gave him the tour. Then we went out to High and Mighty, uh, where we have our veterans going for PTSD force therapy program. And from there, we had a lunch up at the American Legion, and it was very successful. I was expecting two or three people, and nine people walked the door. Mm -hmm. So that went well. Um, under the Dwyer program, as of last Friday, this year we've taken in donations, cash donations, thirty-seven thousand six hundred fifty-seven dollars, and from January twenty-two, an additional twelve thousand seven eighty-nine. Mm -hmm. One, we got one big one. A lady came down. Uh, she manages a, an estate up in Glens Falls. And somebody told her about what we were doing. She came down. She and her husband spent a couple of hours with me. 
And on the way home, she called and said, I like what you're doing. I'm going to give you something. So the Friday before Thanksgiving, she sent us a check for $15,000. Mm -hmm. Nice. That was a big booster. <laughs> widow staffing. When we started a program last year, before Thanksgiving, we had two widows working. We have 35 now that are managing a food bank. That is so wonderful. I love following your Facebook page and everything you do. And some volunteers that are veterans. Yeah, what else is the veterans and, and uh, well, quick question on the food pantry. Are you, are you do you have enough food? Are you getting enough? I have more food in Walmart. Though. Well, we're off. <laughs> we're not, yeah, we're not getting a lot of food now. We're getting extra. I mean, if we could bring stuff out if you want it. No, I mean, no, we have plenty and okay. You know, in addition to the cash, I would say we have tens of thousands of dollars in, in food. Um when the lieutenant governor's uh, chief of staff was here, she said, "We have you have more operations in most most places because we have food, we have clothing, we have um, utensils for the kitchen, almost anything that a veteran needs." Okay, and it is well used. I got to tell you, it's really almost every day we have uh, two or three veterans come in needing food. I had a guy in Monday um, before the commander from the Legion got there. I said. You were here once before. Do you need any food today? And he said, I could use a can of soup. So I took him downstairs and we filled his car full of food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can of soup. Can of soup. And he said, Well, I don't want to take anything from another veteran. Right, right. But if you get a chance to stop out, I mean, we have an operation like you wouldn't believe. Good. And well supported. Catholic Charities last Friday, the church in Clabrick gave us a little over $970, right? Something, something or other. So, mm -hmm. We're getting a lot so of you're getting to the point where you come back to us saying you need a bigger place. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe the rest of the building. Yeah. And some of the activities that uh, the widows are doing, uh, Judge Nichols and Mrs. Nichols are coming next Tuesday. Yeah, the 23rd. And they're going to have a soup, bread, and dessert day for the veterans. All homemade. All homemade soup. Uh, we have a boots on the ground program every Tuesday out at High and Mighty where our veterans that go out there for PTSD interact with other uh, members of the public and they also do um, handicapped kids out there we and that also was a, a nice program we had in september the kindness club from uh, hudson high was out there and those kids are handicapped and they spent the day with our veterans around the horses uh, every tuesday every second tuesday we have coffee and bagel time for the for the veterans and last month we had about 20 right, veterans come in for that. And I'd like to make sure I mention it. Um, we gave out 12, we supported 12 families with Thanksgiving and Christmas and, and coordinated and helped with the, from the Office of the Aging. Thank you. You doing a good job, Gary. And you, you, you worked with the seniors to send Christmas cards to the service men and women overseas, yeah. and the seniors had the best time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the seniors in Canada wrote 100 cards, and I went to Schenectady and had them flown to Iraq. Oh, nice. Great. Don't they plan on retiring yeah. anywhere soon, Dave. <laughs> Maybe. I've, I've been, they're trying to recruit me to go rent in the tunnels of Israel. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, you can fit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the biggest news is my new granddaughter started basic training at Fort Jackson yesterday. Oh, cool. Congratulations. That's awesome. But it's not the Army I knew. And the you yeah. no. no. She videotaped us last night. Really? From yeah. Fort Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, a, it's a changing world, Gary. I, yeah. Have yeah. I probably wouldn't survive it. I know. I know. Is it still called Boot Camp? Army calls it basic training. Basic training. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta be careful what you say now. Yeah, my new wife said, my granddaughter went to boot camp. I said, correction, she's gone to basic training. <laughs> basic <laughs> combat training. For a lot of things you can't do in the Army anymore that you used to get away with. So. Can't yell either. No. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Hey, thank you. Yeah, you okay. Need a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to call the uh, January Public Works to order. Here we go. Up first, we have Highway. Tony must have been early with his uh, agenda. He left, though. And I have a lot, too. I it's started, just because Ray was working. I don't know. I think Ray's got more uh, resolutions than you do. So, uh, you know. <laughs> he was busy writing. That's what happens when you take December off. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's what I said.
All right. You yeah. haven't had anything to say. Show to file. Okay. Easy we're now. Just stuck. We're just stuck. <laughs> I just we patch them and then we plow them. Out. I love it's them. I know. It's a very that's vicious that's cycle. That's for this. And we can. I said, where? Yeah. Where? Yeah. No. <laughs> we tried. <Yes>. Um, <laughs> matching potholes. <laughs> um, <laughs> cut and brush. Roadside sign maintenance. Ditch cover maintenance. Usual winter maintenance. Um, Still doing some work up at solid wastes and some snow and ice control finally and um, we've been preparing our annual service and commodities bids and some storm damage from all the rain <clears throat> personnel uh, one highway equipment maintenance mechanic as we run and was that one of the new hires or no it was not one of them. he's been there a few years actually a river mechanic but um he uh, he went to um, Allegiance, uh -huh. and a big part of it was he does not have to be on call for snow and ice. It was being an issue with you know his kids getting his kids on his bus and stuff. And Allegiance but, doesn't have anybody, and they don't have anybody, <laughs> right? And so it was a pretty significant um, pay jump well, as well as a sign on bonus. Yeah, yeah, because they're all they're, they're all truck to Binghamton or wherever to get fixed. Yeah. Is that first while Ben Funk? Is that what we're yes, talking about? Ben Funk. Yeah. So he'll still be working on our trucks. Just make more money, do it. Just get yeah. more money. Can't blame the guy. All right. Uh, yeah. And we're going to be paying a whole lot more. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 But the big thing for him really was the, uh, you know, not, not the time on call. The time it gets going a little later and not at the work off of the night. Um, no new business. <clears throat> And everything else is uh, uh, resolutions. And first one is authorization to extend uh, the existing service contracts for cotton place recycling, pavement reclamation, shop creep, motor oil and lubricants, and tire service. Move it. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Please. <laughs> And next, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit and amend it. We had another uh, quote come in. So, um, authorization for the chairman of the board of supervisors to enter into a one year general agreement with Asplen Tree Expert, um, whose offices are located in Whitneyport, New York. Um, originally, they were the only quote received. Um, and I did get just yesterday um, a local quote. Um, from Columbia Tree Care down in Claremont. Um, it was a dollar less an hour. Um, so I'd like to amend it. And, and Kelly, I can send you a new resolution and maybe enter into one year agreement with both of them. Mm -hmm. um, so we well, have we, them both yeah. on standby because we've had issues in the past getting people in the few yeah, trees. Sounds good. Yeah. So, what is it, Columbia Tree? Col yeah, Columbia Tree Care. From they were time. on our thing a couple of years ago, but then they wouldn't yes. bid it or yeah. they didn't bid. Fine, yeah. But. I know sometimes it takes a little while to get, to get back to me with the bids, and then he reached yeah. out to me like this week. Uh, so I told him to send in the send in the flow. Prize all you, that's all you got, but I guess residential tree works paying pretty well right now. So. Yeah, you know, yeah. last year Aspen was the only one to bid on it, yeah. and so far the only ones that have ever bid on it since I've been doing it has been you know Columbia and Aspen. Yeah. Nobody else, and I sent it out to Lewis, uh, a couple other ones that the state uses. Yeah. Yeah. And our it's kind of specific what we send it out for. It's just for two man crew and a bucket truck because right, we just yeah. stop the tree. So right. <clears throat> right. I need a motion to approve this with the addition of Columbia Move it, Tree. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. I noted it on there at pen, but you can give it to Kelly and Beth Okay. Yep. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Uh, next is authorization for the chairman of the board of supervisors to execute an agreement to extend the existing snow and ice control contracts with the towns of Hillsdale and Stuyvesant for an additional three years. Um, and we're going to backdate this for the period from September 1st, 2021 to August 31st, 2024. I'll move that one. Was I supervisor then? Yeah. Was that right there. Was that this committee? Took the new guy to find it. That's right. And then what we'll do is over the summer, that's usually when we we update it, we'll do a new agreement for the next three years. What do you do? Some of their rooms? No, they do some of our rooms. Yeah, they're the only two towns that are doing some county roads. Gotcha. Yeah. 
And when our yeah our new highway super brought it up to me, and I said, "Geez, we always do that." And then um, <laughs> I looked at it, and it was old. Ron so, reached uh, out to me. I scrambled, dug through everything, couldn't find anything, and then yeah. and I, I reached out to Hillsdale, and they had no idea either. So. Yeah. Did you second, right? Yeah. Okay. Motion second. second. All in favor? Uh, yeah. Back longer. You have to... we, we've been submitting yeah. bills and getting paid, so I, yeah, you know. Three years. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, how has it worked in the ground you took back from what they us from Chatham? It's worked out well because that, I mean, those run, that run was uh, in place of one of the state runs. So, right. Yeah. So it comes right out in Lebanon. So they're coming right down for right. like 20. Yeah. 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 So, same with the one down in Ankrum or Ankrumdale. Well, my highway super said he wasn't going to lose any sleep by doing that. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know with Ankrum, I was a little hesitant to take Windchill Mountain back because that's a little snow belt down there. But. Ours is just so easy. Our highway garage is right on. Yeah, you guys say, we got to go there anyway, so you might as well drop yeah. a and, and the ones in Hillsdale, they're so far away from any of our other yeah. roads. We always did them when we were doing State Route 22. We'd go right up from Hillsdale, and, and now they're just, we have nothing around there. So, And they're a little short roads, so it didn't make sense for us to go up there. Um, Are you getting the thirteen before all our tr our cloud trucks go out? And take that I don't know. Area? That I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. You guys are right there unless we come in before you. <laughs> all right. Next. Uh, okay. <laughs> have a motion in a second. All, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Um, authorization to fill one vacant budgeted MEO one due to a uh, retirement. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? Uh, all right. Next is authorization to purchase one grade all XL4100 from Alta Equipment off of New York State OGS contract um, for a cost not to exceed 545000 including any potential, potential increases. And this would be a chip's purchase. Did we buy one of those two years ago? Too? No, the last one I think is 2000. 11 or 12 maybe we bought a the gray one that we have yeah you bought it they bought a i say you they yeah uh, we um they bought a jcb in 2019 i think bernie had ordered it yeah uh, and then it came in and i got blessed with it my memory's telling me i guess i thought yeah. we talked about it i was like well, I'm gonna buy we might have we might have talked about it <laughs> The JCP has a Russian I, attachment all that. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 It, it didn't quite be like didn't quite right. reach its potential. Um, well, when I first saw it, I was like, "Ooh, I should get one of those from my town." And I think, right? I know. I did too. Yeah. I looked at it too. Yeah. I thought, when That's they a neat thing. Was somebody else try it first. Yeah, yeah. When they demoed it, I mean, it seemed like it was going to be great. You know, and we had a lot of issues with it, a lot of power issues with the mowing head. Yeah. It wasn't set up for the mowing because it's the mowing head yeah. manufacturer is different than JCB. And, um, I mean, we use it. We we still use it for the mower, and we were able to tweak it enough to use it. But it doesn't get the use that I think was initially intended. The draw straws for the ground. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Strong, yeah. Thanks. Are we um, a second on that? We got a motion. Um, this was for the uh, greater. The greater. Yeah. Motion and second. All in favor. Uh, and next is authorization to purchase one 2024 Western Star. Um, dump truck with plow equipment off of Onondaga County purchasing contract. Move second. Motion and second. All in favor. How long is it going to take to get that? Uh, I don't know. I'm assuming it'll be 2025. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We just we, we were tried able, to get a price on another one, and they wouldn't even give us a price. Yeah, we, yeah. You know, when we started getting this prices a while ago, um, and we had every time we went to upgrade, it kept getting more and more. You know, and then uh, we finally able to track down our two cabs and chassis from 2022 um because the last time we asked them they said oh they're somewhere between you know the, the plant and wax that's what they told us um how long that train been sitting <laughs> now they say they're they're in route to wax so or they're in the yard and they're going to be root as wax so they're looking like early february getting up to steventown um, so I would imagine at least I don't know how you know backed up they are. Yeah. Well, he's got to order the stuff to go on, right? No, that's already ordered. In fact, it's been the one set was ordered for so long we actually used it on that truck not yes. too long ago and right. ordered more because yeah. um, the one set is still for that international from 2020 that we canceled. 
and then reordered and then canceled again. And they're still going to be beholden to this price, right? Even yeah, so we'll find out. I guess. Yeah, right. I may be coming back with another resolution. Within range. Yeah. <laughs> the Western has been a nice truck, though. But uh, yeah, but, yeah. we were really, we were really hoping to get these and run them right. before we ordered the next Try it. one. Yeah. But, I mean, we, we make, like we, we make them back to inter, we make them back to international on the next little one because I yeah, think yeah. we're going to get another, uh, yeah. not a tandem, but uh, yeah. yeah. It's really like, I don't know. We're still looking at them. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, next is authorization to purchase uh, three 2024 Ford F250. These are going to be crew trucks. Um, off the new of Onondaga County bid at a cost of fifty eight five ninety six a piece. Total for all three, not to exceed 180,000, with any potential cost increases, and this is to be paid out of the vehicular equipment budget line on an existing three existing vehicles that are falling apart. Oh no! Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I think this is the last one. You're killing me. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And last one is authorization to declare highway unit number 33, which is a 2005 international dump truck surplus equipment, and sell it our line oh. auction. Okay. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that is everything. I just want to uh, go over with the committee real quick. Uh, Ray and I met with Tony earlier, and we're going to talk about this more this year about um, our vehicle equipment last year when we put the budget together. Uh, I think we requested, you know, seven hundred thousand dollars for vehicle uh, expenses, and ended up getting five hundred out of the budget by the time we got done. Um, but as you see, the first loader that we, or first grader that we bought, was over five hundred thousand um, dollars. The five hundred thousand dollars that we put in the budget for equipment is not cutting it. This we just approved eight hundred ninety thousand dollars worth of vehicle expenses that we need that are coming out of chips, so we're not paving what we should be, you know. Um, I, we need to go back as Bernie uh, Keller years ago had done a nice spreadsheet of, you know, this is how many vehicles we got. This is how they depreciate. And this is how often we ought to be replacing them. So, the, you know, then when we came up, that was seven, eight years ago. And I think that number then was $900,000 a year we anticipated needing. And now the cost of this stuff is going through the roof. So um, I, I want to, well before budget cycle this year, you know, I want to get some of that information and keep, in front of all the supervisors that there's the need to keep up with this cost of this equipment or we're all going to get to a point where uh, we've got 10 2008 trucks that are aging quickly at the same time the state bought us all at one time under a state contract and you know and they're not the and they're not the oldest one that's the thing. no but i mean when they come due they're all yeah, going to come right, due yeah. at the same time yeah yeah. You know, I so. yeah so we'll just keep it out there well but yeah we'll have more information shortly now you had quite a bit of a fleet that was down and then you fixed quite a few where are yeah, you right now? right now um we had we had enough trucks for all the runs um with no spare so um you know a truck gets fixed and then it goes down the spare gets used so normally we have um like five or six spares that on our board on paper we have five or six spares yeah um and right now we don't have any spares but, but you are 11 in the hole right correct yeah we're way better than we were every time we talk positive about things take a turn to be strong yeah yeah we we i think we started the win and went back and if you don't have enough mechanics you're really in trouble well, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. um, but no they, they've been keeping up with it um and we're keeping just enough trucks on the road so and winter's been kind of taking it hopefully we'll get exactly having breaks yeah yeah yeah. yeah, and it's just this last couple of storms. It's been mostly all minor stuff, you know, uh, um, sander chain and hoses, stuff like that. Yeah. Thanks, so, Tony. Yep, thank you. All right. Hey, Tony, did you go look at that, Kirk? Yes, I did. I talked to Louis. 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 Okay. Yeah. Actually, have Brian yeah. up with facilities. Yeah, I, mean, I think he said he already reached out to the state. To the state. Yeah. And he's seeing all that. Yeah. So okay. we're gonna go from there. We'll work on that together. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, you. Absolutely. Shocked I beat half the people here. I'm scrambling to get this done Friday. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the network being down. Uh, so yeah, right off uh, 325. Um, made a repair storm drain in the parking lot. Um, technically, I don't even. It was our parking lot, but um, we did it anyways. Um, 
uh, had multiple office moves, um, and then I uh, had to adjust one of the rooftop motors. Uh, popping down 610, we had a leak in the basement um, from the 12. We couldn't figure out, but it ended up being the wax. You know, everything was rotted down at the bottom, but that turned into a project because we couldn't turn the water off. You know, <laughs> shut off, so don't seem to work, and there's a thousand of them in that building. So it, it took a lot longer than expected, but, you know. Um, you get away from that building. No, I know. <laughs> That's why I said when, when they said that, I was like, you got to be kidding. We were going to have to rip wall. I'm going, oh, God. <laughs> you know? But luckily, it was in the basement, so we were able to, you know, do it very cost effectively, we'll say. Um, uh, like I said, uh, <laughs> some loop of guard. We used to use 50 pounds of Freon and freeze the pipe. Is that all the tricks? We, yeah, well, <laughs> we, we had that one. We used to have one at Pine Hill. We used to borrow all the time. But yeah. once that went away, but that was, um, that was when you could dump Freon in the atmosphere. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Probably cheaper too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a dollar a pound back then. That, that was <laughs> not more. <laughs> uh, let's see. DSS installed some. Uh, you know, multiple runs of network cabling, painted both stairwells. Um, quick update, we had uh, some issues a um, couple different times with some uh, gas smells. Uh, and uh, so I talked with Central, you know, like I said, it, it happened multiple times over there. So I had to leave, me, you know, and get over there. I could never find it. So we ended up figuring that the, um, the vent, the temporary vent for the boilers was going right you know, in that general area, and of course, that's where the air handler's intake is. Um, so it, it, when it, you know, had like a little purge, yep. got into the building, they all went crazy. And, sure. you know, so now it's stacked up where it's supposed to be. So okay. hopefully that solves the problem. So I had Nymo there a couple of times. The guy's like, I can't find nothing. I was like, right. you know, just walk around, make everyone feel better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's basically, um, so, you know, that project's moving along. Um, yeah, because they were using, what, the intake for the exhaust for a little while? They, well, they were both yeah. right next to each other down. So now, finally, um, since they got rid of the old boiler, the they could boiler, use right the actual uh, vent going to the roof. So now everything's all tied together. Um, and then, uh, like I said, it's, it's pro, you know, progressing. They're, you know, they're going to be sending a schedule pretty soon on that for doing the air handlers. So, okay. Um, so I emailed Jeff today about that, confirmed that everything is where it's supposed to be. So um, highway, we had, uh, you know, out at Kinner, we upgraded the body shop lights. It took me a while. I had some the guys from Walbert come down. They found some, you know, uh, lights that we could add into it, LEDs, and it really brightened it up. So he's happy up there. Um, up in New Lebanon, some electrical repairs. Um, you know, we're... We still got much more to do, but uh, you know the, the immediate ones were were fixed. Um, up at Solid Waste, um, down in Hillsdale, the one support, you know, one the one four by four rotted off where all the panel and and everything is outside. So we temporarily put it up. I got an order in, but uh, we're gonna switch it over probably when the weather's better. Um, uh let's see here up at the sideways we finally get we covered the electric panels you know for uh just fear of the snow coming off the roofs um and so far the sewer line water line electrical conduit you know all been uh placed in the roughing is done you know before the building comes in so water and sewer had to repair the, the heater at mount i to replace the gfi and uh got all the meter readings Commerce Park, yeah. and then the airport is the the maintenance on the airfield equipment. You know, is up to date. So. Did you ever find anybody to go out there for the animal control? I just renewed the permit, um, and uh, I got it. It's in the hands of the sheriff's department right now, so uh, we'll see. You know what that schedule works out to be, um, and if not, then we'll. You know, we'll have to figure something out. Well, let me know. Like I said, okay. I say it's available anytime. Okay. So, yeah, we'll have to. And he's all legal for that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Because, like I said, you know, it's, I think he, you know, he's doing his best. He's going out there and he's, you know, tracking them now, just trying to see their paths that they're, right. they're moving right now. So, yeah, they are working on it. But, um, but I just got the permits last week. So, I just dropped them off okay. Friday. So, what's going on with that? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, like, right, right. yeah, we're allowed to now do like get this airfield um, permit 
I just have to renew it every year and we can do whatever we have. We need to, you know, the wildlife gotcha. permit. So. Yonder come my kinfolk. <laughs> 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 Yeah, because we had the thing they said about six or six of them are herding around out there. So, <coughs> okay. Any other questions for Brian? Brian, the intake next to the exhaust sounds a little bit worse. Well, it was a temporary. Uh, yeah, it was a temporary. Yeah, it was just a temporary, and they, like they I were, said, it's just a very minute per. You know, here temporary, there. but lawsuits last forever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, today. All right, Ray is next. I think. Yeah. No, no, Wendy. Sorry. Oh, Wendy, I'm sorry. Wendy. The stack of papers said Ray, Ray was Ray's next, so I, I don't know. Ray's being punished. Where, where's, where's Wendy? So you put Wendy on the bottom of the pile. No, she's it's just that Ray had so many resolutions it got in the way. That's right. a lot. That's my thing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start off with the food scraps. Uh, we did put out extra 35 gallon um, waste containers at all the stations during the holiday season um, because we actually collected more. Uh, we are coming into an issue with um, ham bones, um, particularly like the full ham bones. Um, our digester does not really like them. Mm. Um, and we can't get them into the grinder. Um, so we've had a little bit of problems with that. Um, so I think it's not always a problem that we're seeing hand bones, but it's definitely around holidays. So I think I'm just going to bring an extra container to all the stations. We'll separate the hand bones <laughs> and the pumpkins in the fall. And uh, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the big hand bones. The pumpkins have to be cut at least in half, oh, okay. and some of the larger ones a little bit bigger, just because it's they get, they're they get caught up. Early. They're not yeah. So hold in. No hand bone. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah they, they do. Take them out to the airport. So we're averaging just under a thousand pounds um, a week still, um, and we just emptied out six hundred pounds of material on the ninth. Are you getting rid of the material we're developing? Well, so okay. we're holding the material now because no one wants the material because it's winter. Right. Okay. So we will have lots for spring. So I anticipate. Um, all of the stations that are participate, like have yeah. waste that we're picking up, will be getting some to distribute back. Some to amendment people. to distribute back because yeah. uh, we'll have quite a lot. Do we need that. to? Do we oh, need to goodness. promote that to our um, smart people or something? I, or I uh, we'll see if it just goes. Forward, yeah, once we you know get into February, March, okay. if the weather starts to change up a little bit. I think we'll uh, do some you, promotion. You free, you're so right, yeah. yeah. Take yeah. farmers market. There you go. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 Okay. Taste of New York. So, um, oh, there was a station year to date yeah. report, um, which is, did I, it's actually, I see. Tell me what I got. No. And it was a separate thing. Sorry. Yeah, right here. Okay. There it is. So I know in the past um, these were being submitted. So I just I knew we had a couple of new people on the committee. They're, not, they're all at school uh, tonight, too. So, know, so uh, we'll do it next month. That's anyway, right. So this is last year. Um, and I will just give each month um, the previous month's year to date. So you're a month to date, I guess, at that point, just to see. So the garbage that you'll see is um, commercial and residential all combined. So that's coming from all of our stations and the Greenport. That includes City of Hudson and Town of Greenport as well. Those numbers aren't separated. At the bottom of this, I am showing a, a, the separation of just your recyclable material um, because that we weren't capturing that in the recyclable material at the top. <laughs> Have you had much feedback from the increase in the recycling fees? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, conversation. I mean, yeah. but nothing bad. I no it, hostility, and then there's a little <laughs> conversation, and then it's like, oh, okay, it makes sense. Yeah. Um. So you know, it, it's just explaining why. 
Um, and then you just for put the such an innocuous spin on the word hostility. Well, yeah, you know, well. with a smile. <laughs> the troubleshooting that stuff, I don't mind doing, so it's fine. But yeah, no, residents were a little concerned at first. It has not slowed sales down at all. Um, I had a senior citizen call me in the car the other day. I'm sorry. I don't know. That's not care. I I dealt with customer yeah. service for years, so yeah, <laughs> not a whole lot. Um, but yeah, our seniors. Yeah, I think probably a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but breaking it down, you know, if there's 52 weeks in a year, it's less right. than a dollar. Hopefully, this is it for a while. Um, has been yeah. a little bit better. Okay. Um, so open top roll off containers. I sent out a bid request for that. We actually I did it so that we could do the resolution for that today. Um, so I'm going to be asking for nine open top roll off containers, three of each of the 20, 30, and 50 cubic yard. We will be able to pick these up um, and therefore save three thousand ninety-two dollars in one cent. Great. Household hazardous waste day. We did a two-year bid last year, so it was for twenty-three and twenty-four. So the dates for this year will be Saturday, May fourth, from eight to twelve noon, and Sunday, October sixth, from eight to twelve noon, um, both at the fire training center. And I'm going to, now that I have told the committee, I will be putting that on our website. So we'll send out some notifications. <laughs> um, the Household Hazardous Waste Annual Report was completed. Um, I have the grant ready for submit. Uh, there's just a little kink. I can't actually submit it until I have the proper <laughs> um, authorization. I don't have the right credentials on Grants Gateway at the moment. Yep. Um, so it's $39,016 that we'll get back at the end of the year. Uh, and station annual reports will be submitted this month or the very beginning of next month, but before the next committee meeting. And then the big thing, the department has been asked to review their fee structure and come up with possible ways to increase revenue to offset expenses. So I did some calling. Um, Green County Solid Waste is transparent. All of the information that I have up there you can find on our website. Um, and then I reached out to two local um, places. The mattresses are killing us. The mattresses <laughs> are, in, yes, <laughs> they are. Um, oh, yeah, I don't want to get that. <laughs> yeah, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Couple months. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so you can see the difference between everything. Uh, That's a good chart. I appreciate that. Look at that. The tires. Tires. There's some low hanging fruit there. <laughs> yeah. So tires was interesting. Um, business C. It's twenty eight dollars across the board, right? So it doesn't matter what size it is. They'll charge twenty eight dollars. Um, I liked Green County's structure just because they only have it's six dollars, which is the nineteen inch and lower. And then the 25 was for the, the up to the 24 and a half inch, which is as big as we take. Um, so there is some wiggle room in the tires area. Green County is also charging two dollars a room, and we're only charging one. So, <laughs> so there, yeah. But the appliance price, look at that. Yeah. So interesting. Oh, here one is charged all appliances like for the one company is charged over the scale um in including appliances with freon at um 139 a ton uh, but their minimum fee is 69.50 right so if you go with a refrigerator you're paying 69.50 to get rid of it um so i kind of would like y'all to maybe look at the minimum tip fee as well um, you know, with appliances, I don't mind saying that, you know, I mean, for those of you that know me that long, I used to be in the appliance industry. I was one of the first people to have a license to recover refrigerant in Columbia County, met with Columbia County solid waste back then when they were just beginning to get into this. And we talked about what it ought to cost. And, um, you know, the idea back then of getting $20 wasn't enough money to come and suck the refrigerant out or something, you know, back in that era but I, you know i mean i i left the appliance industry in 1999 and we were charging 20 and 30 dollars to get rid of appliances then you know um 
this I the county knew I think in the 90s that it was a losing proposition and when we talk about trying to balance the budget here I know there's been supervisors that are concerned with the increased costs um, and I certainly get that for our residents we don't want to see stuff dumped on the side of the road um, but the real cost of getting rid of some of these things is much greater than what we're charging and it always has been you know um, so I do think that we should look at increasing some of these fees. I, you know, we don't have to whack people on it, but you know, um, increasing some of those fees, I think is, as Wendy says, you know, the minimum tip fee, the mattresses, uh, appliances, uh, you know, uh, straighten out the tires. I don't see why we wouldn't just try and capture some of that. Um, you know, we don't have to be higher than everybody else, but, but I don't, I do, I do respect Wendy's dealing with um, a number of people concerned with the new recycling permits and you know you don't want to dump this all on the workers in the same month but <laughs> yeah question do we so like the washer and dryers do we do we get money for those when you get rid of those so they go um they, they get scrap they get said scrap metal, metal, yeah. right so you get a scrap metal mm -hmm. price and stuff like yeah. that i mean there's certain things you get money back on like mm -hmm. the mattress you're not gonna get no. that's something you just gotta no. get rid of and mattresses are really hard because they're actually going in with the garbage, right? So they're taking up space and they don't weigh anything. Gotcha. So it's the box springs now aren't even like old time back box springs that you could break them up. So you're it's they're just becoming a little more difficult to pack now. You know, we're using them that are the guys are so great about using the mattresses until they are pretty banged up anyways. They'll wipe the top. I watched him do that yeah, on Saturday. Just, he actually it's the cleanest I've ever seen yeah. that day. There's no nails on the concrete. I, then I was like, wow, how are they doing this? And I looked over, there's a mini excavator. And the guy's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he takes the, the mattress and the excavator. And, he's and, a sponge. Yeah, that's what he's doing. No, so, it, was, it, was the, it was the cleanest I've ever seen. Yeah. It was good. They're, they're trying. They're, they're doing a really great job. You know, we have heard some good comments from contractors lately how nice Greenport is uh, when they mm -hmm. visit it now. So, uh, yeah. It took no. a long time to get that second top load building, but it really does function it well. It just yeah. made a huge difference. Yeah. Now, do we know what the Green County pays to their provider for their hauling and everything? Is it a similar thing like we deal with with Casella with our contracts? Or because they seem even to be in a worse position than we are. But they have a contract They're, where all of their garbage right. goes through, the, you know, so all of the, I, Wendy can explain it's it better. Just to, it's set up a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't actually, if you they're making money off of the commercial, um, tonnage, basically, um, like, you know, we're only handling a portion of it. They are too, but all of, you know, all of the waste in green County goes through their, okay. their station. So they're making money off of everybody else's waste too. Hard mm -hmm. to explain exactly. Well, I think yeah, yeah, they, they're seeing the volume. Right. They're, 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 they're with the other right. Entities. Right. And we're only doing a portion of it and they have the ability to make some money out of that somehow. So. And they have the four transfer stations. Yeah. The, the four big transfer stations. Rather than seven. Yeah. Well, I, don't like <laughs> I know, right. Station, but, you know, right? right. Like convenient stations, yeah. so. That's right. So anyway, I don't know. I, I think that we should uh, continue to look at some of those. Give it a couple months and you come back with a resolution to increase those. I would think that we would do that. Okay. Um, input on, you know, from the committee would be great. So I'm not overreaching. Sure. <laughs> We're underreaching. Um, well, you gave us a great chart. I think we can all give yeah. you a comment on it and uh, yeah. send you something. Okay. And, you know, you can, we can all send Wendy your comment in offline and then we'll average it out. In, in our metal collection at our satellite facilities, that's still the steward of the shop clicking your, your punch cards as he judges what goes in that metal, <laughs> right? He or she. That, the metal, the, oh, yeah. So we're, they don't take any appliances at any of the smaller stations. They all have to come through Greenport. But, yes, there is a punch card system. Anything that is on our list, um, I had somewhere in here of like washers and dryers are obviously seven fifty. Microwaves are five dollars. We have a pretty comprehensive list, but if you're coming in with just random scrap metal, it, it is kind of 
um, the, the station the attendant gets to decide. Yeah, we have had talks is. about that. Uh, tags were not is are uh, we're no longer accepting. Um, we've collected actually as of today 1,526 unused tags. Of that, 1,193 of those tags were exchanged for bags, um, either an even exchange or they decided not to do the one dollar bag and get a three dollar bag or something like that. Uh, we did have just one resident come in with 329 one dollar tags, and we submitted payment through the treasurer's office just to pay him back. He didn't want that many bags on hand. <laughs> so I wonder why he wanted that many bags. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Just thought uh, a little bit of a communication, you know, error and just thought that they would last forever and he would never have to worry about his garbage again. I'll buy the bags while they're cheap. Yeah, yeah right. right. Like stamps, right? Right, yeah. forever stamps. Yeah, it's right, like, right. right. And that just turned out not to be true. You so. <laughs> <laughs> need to make more garbage. They use them. Right. Yeah, it was, it's been interesting. Um, we were also asked to review the bag sales for a possible increase in the bag fee. So June 10th of 2023 was when we officially went back fully to all bags. Um, the $1 tag, if you remember, was discontinued in 2022. Then we brought the bag back um, the following month. So there is that chart. It's it is dollar dollar. Yeah, awesome? so this one. So this is showing all of our tag and bag sales at our stations and through our clerks for the 2023 uh, year. Keep in mind, though, uh, quarter two is a little funky with the numbers. I had to kind of, we did a, what, 10, nine days of tag sale and then bag sale. And so there was, I, I couldn't capture it all in bags just because it was a little funky. But um, so that's what we looked at. And if you see, you can see that the $1 bag has actually decreased a little bit and although the numbers aren't showing it, our $3 bags are definitely increasing in sales, as is our $5 bags. But underneath all this, we're mitigating loss because we're not having a whole issue with the, the tickets. Right, so now that we have bags, right, we're not losing. I think we're on track to increase that, but I'd like to continue to watch it. Um, so what I'll do is just give you guys just kind of I think monthly would be a little difficult, but I can at least give you the first quarter's update on what we are doing versus what we did in 2023 for quarter one through four. Um, quarter three being that was June, July, August. So that's September, right? So that's our busiest time. Um, and you can see that bags, I mean, the $5 from quarter one tickets to right yeah just, increase quite a bit yeah so i'll keep you guys up to date but i do know that there is um conversation to raise those bag fees um but i do want you to remember that we didn't actually go back to bags until june 10th so if i can have at least a quarter yeah, I, th I think that that <laughs> that is moving in the right direction yeah. so uh I know with the increase that we need to make, just giving us a quarter to kind of see how it's going, and then maybe we can come back to the table. Right, after the first quarter. In, yeah, in so. April, and if that's the direction that we need to go in, then then we'll go through with that. I think and I then, was the one that brought that up with the dollar bags. I mean, what can you get for a dollar? Yeah. Okay. Or dollar, you can't buy cheap for no, the senior know. citizens love it. I, yeah. yeah, but a dollar. I mean, what is a dollar? <laughs> it's I mean, a lot anymore, for senior citizens. It is, yeah. So, I mean, I think we could easily raise our bag prices on all of them, a like bucket piece or something, you know, and check they could justify it. I mean, just try to make up all the spending. Yeah. Those things we need to get the banks as far as the biggest thing they was putting. Well, I'm actually yeah, support waiting for quarters now it's gone. But yeah. well, I don't even think yeah. I don't think a quarter is long enough. I think I, I really don't think a quarter is long enough to show. I know six you know, six months. Hundred dollars really a yeah. service to our Asian population. What bag B and the increase there for the third character. Well, I don't know. 
I would like to see, you know, see if it's gonna, how it's going to even, even out a little bit because it is. There's no way that you've been to the grocery store, your bag they take the food home costs more than that. Some people go out of, I see some of the elderly people going out of the stores without any bags and just putting it right into oh, the, yeah. yeah. the car. I'm one, one of them just because I'm, you know, yeah. <laughs> I forget to bring them in with yeah. me. Onions yeah. rolling across the parking lot. Yeah. 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 I always feel like I'm stealing. They could not have a bag. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Like yeah, yeah. They're watching. Yeah. All right. Okay. Resolution okay. request. Oh, uh, the Salt Waste Department is requesting authorization to purchase one 2024 Western Star. Um, we actually have a 2022 western star that we have not yet received you um, have ordered one. <laughs> it has been ordered by chance was that also in a round i'm assuming okay part of it okay so it's just a cabin it's chassis, just a cabin chassis um we have the hoist and tarp system that we're going to be reusing from the vehicle that we'd be replacing this with um so it's just the cabin chassis well, it's budgeted and it second. is budgeted yep. I'll second. got a motion and a second all in favor Aye. now what were the roll-offs that you were buying and sorry that's the They're one after this yep. yeah. <laughs> so i have a resolution request authorizing the solid waste department thank you second. motion and a second all in favor Aye. that was the scale oh no that oh. was the we did a scale too Oh, you didn't have a scale. Right. Well, no, this one was the resolution request was to enter into agreements with commercial establishments to provide waste disposal. Services. Well, that's what's on your agenda, but what's on the screen? Oh, what that? is on the screen? Oh, yeah. Mettler Toledo. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got so Mettler. Okay. Mettler Toledo is the one I just did. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. So then we have the commercial establishment. Okay, so now there's this is the one that I thought we were doing seeking permission to enter agreements with commercial establishments to provide waste disposal services. Basically, we have 16 establishments. We go pick up their stuff. Move. Second. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. You need permission no. to pick it up, I guess. No, and we increase yearly the fee. That's so we can make money. Yeah, more and more, right. Right. Okay, so this is the open top roll off. So the department is um, seeking yeah. permission to purchase nine open top roll off containers, three uh, 50, three thirties, and three twenties from Waste Quick, who uh, met all the specified requirements. Um, For a new letter, right? Yes. yes. Oh, and roll off containers. Do you have a breakdown in front of you of what the different ones were? Just out of curiosity, I can. That's all in a bit. They were the only ones that bid. Yeah, no, I know. I just was uh, didn't know how much difference in price they were between the. Uh, you didn't give me a copy, right? Okay. It's timely because I was at the Chatham Transfer Station and there was there was about three thousand some dollars, right? Yeah, um, well, each one is different. So. Oh, they're different sizes. Yeah, they're different sizes. Oh, yeah. So the fifty yarders are. Um, well, we're saving a little bit. So the fifty yarders are ninety-one seventy-five each. The 30 yarders are 5701 a piece and the 20 is 5278 a piece. Mm -hmm. We have yeah, some in tough shape. Though. We oh, have, yeah. So we've already sent four to auction last year. Uh, there's two more that absolutely are going this year. Um, Does anybody buy it? I think we did, yeah. Scrap 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> we also sold a, an ejection last year. <laughs> You sure are welding and patching them together. I know that. No. I think they're like, yeah, been welded so many times. <laughs> they're really we don't we don't okay. Second. All right. So I got a motion and a second. All in favor on the okay. dumpsters. I'm sure I miss that motion. It's me right over here. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. How about that? All right. All right. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. So I'll start off with uh, bridges as far as our bridge projects. Uh, Rothman Road Bridge, so finally received the information um, regarding the funding. 
uh, from New York State Department of Transportation, and I'm in the process of completing the initial project documentation. So I actually um, have a resolution authorizing the chairman to sign that paperwork so we can continue to move that project along. Uh, Simon Falls Bridge, the survey firm, has been out. Uh, they've been doing property and topographic survey out at the bridge. Um, Residents have been telling me they're all nervous. Uh, yeah. I'm excited, right? Now, now they're starting to see activity, yeah. 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 What does uh, that mean? What's happening? Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, within the month of uh, February, we're hoping to have our initial discussions with okay. uh, Officer Parks and Rec as far as the actual historic nature of that structure so obviously i'll keep you informed yeah you can yeah, attend i'd that. love to be involved yeah. yeah have you attend that meeting when that takes place uh the newest round of bridge new york funding is in place uh culvert applications are due uh this friday so we'll be submitting uh, an application for a single culvert on county route uh, 11. that's an area where we've had that flooding going up through Martin Hill area <laughs> And then in addition, uh, January 26, uh, we're going to be submitting on two bridge projects as well. All right. Uh, 911 contract, or to me, my apologies, the architect has submitted the uh, final contract documents. And so I'm just providing uh, final comments for that. And then I'm hoping to get an actual bid date um, sometime in the month of February so we can get that process ready and get yeah. that constructed. Centric has completed the work at the DSS building as far as the new roof, as well as the gutter systems and the boiler system. So those systems are up on operational. So again, with that uh, temporary venting issue, that was because we had to keep some of the boilers active while we were replacing the other one. So it was really a very short period of time that that was taking place. Uh, the DPW garage, the solar array has been complete, is completely online. For anyone that's interested, uh, we actually have real-time data coming from the solar array on the on the building, mm -hmm. and uh, I've worked with uh, Don Meltz to get that information posted onto the Climate Smart website. So that is the link, so you can actually track the production, uh, CO2 reduction, uh, things of that nature. So um, it's an, actually a very nice dashboard. Um, and the nice thing is, is that once the DSS facility comes online, which will be again next fall, or my apologies, this fall of 2024, we'll be able to add that dashboard onto that uh, uh, same website as well. How long this one was running? I'm sorry, go ahead. How long has it been running? Uh, this been, yeah, in the middle of December. Right, so not a lot of sun. No. Yeah, yeah, between, yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, it'll get better. It'll get better, yeah. Because right now, again, especially right. just the other day when we had the snowfall, it's been cold. It has not had a chance right. to melt and things of that nature. So, yeah, you, you'll see some days where we're getting some nice production. Um, but obviously, again, uh, there, there this are other is not days the prime time yeah, of year. It's not the prime time, right? Especially with the angle. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know. Correct. Yeah, it's starting to get better now. Yeah, yeah it's starting to rise in the horizon as well. And we don't send facilities up there, nothing. No, we do not. No, no, we don't want to do that. I don't want to track folks onto the roof and Break cause down. more holes in the <laughs> brand new roof that we've had. Or the solar panels. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they did put me up in a lift. I took pictures and got them on the website, though, so you can see it. Yeah, but, yeah we're actually going to get. Uh, so the highway has a drone. We're actually going to get a drone. Right okay. Like yeah. Cool. Take some additional yeah. photos of that as well. Great. So, um. Regarding the airport, so the engineering department, we're working with the airport consultant developing the scope of work, which we've now completed for the airport master plan. So the master plan has to be updated every 20 years. It's the basis of future funding for that facility. So again, uh, you'll see a resolution uh, authorizing a submission of an application to the FAA for funding a new master plan. Uh, 911 telecommunication towers, uh, continuing to work with 911 regarding the inspection of the access road and the site work. Uh, the unit, uh, the tower at the Gallatin station is complete. They're completing the electric and the uh, access roads in the new Lebanon site as well. So work continues to progress. Unfortunately, the weather has slowed that process down with the storms that have taken place. Um, it, was, it was pointed out to me that there's no uh nothing blocking access to the stairs going up the tower currently is that a concern for you currently there is not yeah there so there will be a cage uh that we're going to try to install on there to obviously minimize anyone trying to we don't have a lot of teenagers left anymore to climb up there <laughs> 
They're busy crossing the bridge anyway. <laughs> uh and so also had a uh pre-lease meeting with usda um usda is requesting a formal proposal from the county uh based on the information that they've submitted to us they are requesting that some improvements be made to the building some of it is uh minor items such as replacing the carpet um painting replacing the blinds but they due to security concerns they do want some additional construction to take place so we do need to make some modifications to the uh central server area um making sure that that is uh better equipped as far as security but then also they do want us to construct an actual um waiting area uh, or reception area so that way they can close that off so people are not just walking into the open space and into that uh, office. So we do need to work and negotiate some costs with them. So there is a resolution requesting the chairman myself to uh, negotiate with the USDA and come up with a proposal. And yeah, that's yeah. You got that's my message on that yesterday, Ray. Right? I tried to right? open that zip file. And yeah, I don't know why you, you don't need a passcode for it. It says no password, but yet yeah, everything I clicked on, it wouldn't open yeah. okay i'll try to send up what i'll do is i'll open it up and maybe i'll send you get is a cover letter but it was a zip file. A terrorist threats and... i was i was surprised they asked the very same question and apparently they say they've had people come over the counter was the quote that was provided to me so they do want this is fsa yeah so they want to have no, a... no, i'm sorry not fsa but but usda has indicated yeah. that they have had folks come over the counter the quote to me was they have folks coming over the counter to their staff and they wanted to provide a better secure environment for them. Did they, they, the they have to get any information from their staff? People lose it. <laughs> yeah. That could very well be. Uh, did they not find another, weren't they looking for another place? They did not divulge, they, yes. So yeah. so they could not provide me whether anyone else had submitted, um, but they have indicated and stressed their to standard me negotiation. Yeah, that <laughs> they really want to work with the county. They won't really want to work with us. Well, yeah. we're trying to encourage soil and water to get some wireless in there and get some video capabilities. And we're like, doesn't the USDA? Oh, no, they don't let us do anything. And, you know, there's like <laughs> clamp down as yes. far as their data sharing. Correct. Oh, oh, yeah. It's a wireless. completely separate oh, yeah. network. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Completely yeah. separate network. And we built a we built a computer room for them yeah, we, we five we years ago, didn't we? Everything. Yeah, so. The, That's a good thing how many acres we work. So yeah, so so the computer, so we do have to make a modification to that computer room because uh, the walls have to extend all the way up to the trusses. Right now they don't, they stop at the ceiling line. Okay. So they want to yeah. go all the way up to the trusses. They want that completely enclosed. That's the only modification as okay. an example there. They also wanted some panic buttons similar to the way the county has its uh, telephone system in case again, someone- yeah, some alert is in. Correct. They wanted to have an build a wall. Build a wall. Build a wall. Right, yeah. build a wall. You farmers are up. And again, please keep in mind. <laughs> so but these improvements are all built into the fees associated yeah. with the right. proposal. Sure. So right. um we will be yeah, getting not that hard to do. No, exactly. The only the, the biggest the biggest issue that I had submit to them a proposed layout of the proposed modifications. So that way they can agree in concept. So then I can get pricing to then incorporate and build into the proposal. <laughs> all and I need to provide three quotes. And then we all wonder time for the next lease. <laughs> we wonder why our taxes are yeah. high. You know, expenses. Are they going to go all going up to the trusses? What the heck is somebody going to run in the trusses? I don't that's know. what I say. Are they going to go in the attic and anyway, jacket? Apparently, that's what they're worried about. Um, so in any event, so yeah, so I'm also going to be uh, requesting an extension because uh, the due date for the request is February 12th, and they've indicated that that's not an issue. It's then out. So yeah. I'm it only took them 18 months to give yeah. a proposal. I'm sure the local office does not care at all. <laughs> no, no, they don't. No, they've been very good to work with. Uh, so the first resolution is uh, authorizing the chairman of okay. the Board of Supervisors. Uh, uh, motion to second. All in favor. Aye. Uh, uh, the second two resolutions first uh, have to do with the airport as far as getting reimbursed from the state. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. On the first one, we're getting five thousand seventy-eight dollars back from the state. Okay. The, number's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> the second one associated with the terminal apron pavement that was uh, redone this past year. Will uh, the resolution is requesting that the supervisors 
uh, excuse me, the chairman of board of supervisors execute the uh, project agreement, we'll be getting thirteen thousand eight hundred and seventy three dollars back. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Next resolution is uh, authorizing a grant application with Becero. Second. Aye. Motion second. All favor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really? You're really held it up to a while. No, I just say I just say ninety percent, five percent, five percent. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Uh, resolution authorizing a submittal of a grant application to the FAA for Move a it. new second. Yeah. system. Yeah. Motion a second. All in favor? Uh, system observation. Yeah. That's why he goes down. <laughs> <laughs> you guys wear him down. <laughs> He's getting mine. You guys. <laughs> this is, well, yeah. uh, an additional grant application uh, to the Move FAA. It. Second. Motion a second. All in favor? No worries. No worries. No worries. No worries. No worries. No worries. What to cost? 90, 95% federal dollar. Right. This is 58,000. Right? And uh, the next one is for actual equipment. Yeah. Or my apologies. This no, one is for, lighting. I'm sorry, this is for the lighting. Yeah. This is for the construction phase of the taxiway lighting. Good move that too. One point one seven million dollars. Yeah. Right. That's something for lighting. Oh, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna get their train. I think I got a motion in a second. Yep. All in uh, favor? Uh, you better be flying in some high rolling big spenders. They are some big planes that are coming. Actually, today there was a G5 that came in. I was actually surprised with the snow and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> um, this next resolution is for free application for snow removal equipment. No blower. Wow. Well, it's actually for a new loader for the facility, yeah, yeah, two stage yeah. snow blower to replace the existing single stage, uh, which has been very problematic. A front sweeper for the uh, for the loader, as well as plow trucks. Motion to second. All in favor. No, 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 no. No, no. And you're giving money away. It's it's all money. Nice. They're That's really nice. paying for a lot. For That's thing you want. Yeah, yeah, they are paying. Yeah, they'll pay ninety-five. So yeah, yeah, correct. We want. Uh, uh, next resolution has to do uh, with the um, excuse me, uh, Mill Hill uh, Road Bridge. So we had gone out to bid uh, for consulting services on this particular project. I was not able to enter into a contract with the apparent low bidder. So I've decided to, we couldn't come to terms, and I've decided to move on to the second low bidder. It's only a difference of $3,000 between the low bidder and the second low. We're currently working with Creighton Manning on the stall bridge. They've been able to move that project along very quickly for us. So uh, this resolution is to authorize uh, the chairman to enter an agreement with Creighton Manning um, to move for those design services. Second. Yeah, on the budget. Yeah. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, next resolution is authorizing the chairman to execute all documents and agreements for the implementation of the funding cost of 90% of the design and right away, as well as construction costs in the amount of uh, $4,590. Mm -hmm. right 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 right. New York State, move it. <laughs> I thought yeah. it was a done deal last year. Motion and a second. All in favor. We never got the paperwork. We got awarded, but never got the paperwork until this recently. Uh, the last resolution. Move. Is for stall bridge as far as the sea. Ray, area. back up to that bridge. Let's this say this, this is going, like to, going in the town of Stuyvesant and it's not in the town of Stuyvesant. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to wait for this. I need this. I need this. I need I can not find it. The last one? This is the last one, yeah. And so this is for the construction admin services, 168580 with Craig Manning. I was able to negotiate this down by roughly uh, $46,000 um, because we're taking that uh, some of the responsibility on as far as the uh, engineering. Do we really need that bridge? Now? Right home. So the extra money can go towards the other bridge I need. Oh, now we need to do it. All right, here, the motion and a second. I have a motion and a second on the bridge. All in favor? All in favor? Thank you. Oh, you do the next one of the bridges we're submitting on is actually fucking. I think we're ready for a motion to adjourn. Are we adjourned? Uh, I think we're adjourned. Yeah, I was going to say if there's any more questions for Ray. Holy crap.